Today's topic of discussion will be on gene therapy and its latest and perhaps even greatest innovation, CRISPR. What is gene therapy? Gene therapy is the process in which normal functioning genes are introduced into cells where these genes are either defective or missing to cure genetic disorders. It is important to differentiate gene therapy from genetic engineering, which has the aim of modifying the genes of an organism to improve and enhance its capabilities from the norm. This episode, we are going to discuss a more recent and extremely fascinating gene therapy tool known as CRISPR. So, what is CRISPR? CRISPR is an acronym for Clustered, Regularly Interspaced, Short, Palindromic Repeats. It is a newly discovered tool whose function is precise genetic engineering. It is particularly useful for this purpose as it has several features, such as being able to locate a specific part of DNA in a cell and can make incisions in the DNA sequence. CRISPR is short for CRISPR-Cas9 and consists of two main parts, CRISPR-RNA, and Cas9. CRRNA, or CRISPR RNA for short, contains a copy from CRISPR of a specific part of DNA. Meanwhile, Cas9 is an enzyme that cuts both strands of the DNA double helix after it is guided to the correct locations of DNA by the CRRNA and another RNA known as tracer RNA. There are also PAMs, which are protospacer adjacent motifs, which are markers located next to the area of DNA that should be cut, which prevents the Cas9 enzyme from accidentally cutting the CRISPR region. All these features indicate the potential of CRISPR in genetic engineering. Origins of CRISPR. CRISPR was originally found in archaea and then in bacteria. It was discovered that they are used by the defense system of bacteria to fight off a type of virus known as bacteriophage. CRISPR, containing repeating sequences of nucleotides with bits of DNA in between known as spaces, which are taken from the viruses that attacked. The spaces from the viruses are essentially archives, which contain DNA of the previous viruses that attacked the bacteria, so that if the same virus attacks again, it would be detected and destroyed. This was demonstrated by a team of researchers at a food ingredients company who used a species of bacteria known as Streptococcus thermophilus as a model and saw that each time a bacteria cell survived a virus attack, it added the spaces of the virus into the CRISPR, which were identical to parts of the virus's DNA. This demonstration showed how bacteria utilizes CRISPR as an effective means of fighting off viruses. CRISPR as a gene therapy tool. CRISPR has a high probability of being used effectively for gene therapy as its ability to cut out specific DNA sequences and even replace them means that CRISPR could be programmed to remove 40 genes from the sequence and manipulate the cell's DNA repair mechanism into changing the DNA to no longer include the defect that caused the disease. Therefore, it has the ability to cure many conditions caused by genetics, including sickle cell disease. This was shown in 2012 by two research papers, which demonstrated that the Cas9 could be controlled to cut a specific piece of DNA by editing the nucleotide sequence of CRRNA to match the part of DNA you wanted removed. Also, the previously mentioned CRRNA and tracer RNA were merged to create gRNA which did both functions. There are also two ways to repair the DNA after the specific part has been cut out. One method is to glue the cut ends together, but this can cause possible errors such as further mutations and is not the most reliable method. The second method uses a short DNA strand to add nucleotides to fill in the gap, allowing scientists to choose what to fill the gap with and minimizing the chances of issues such as mutations. Scientists have achieved great precision with CRISPR. That is incredible. An example of their skill is that on the 11th of January this year, 
scientists have managed to store data in the DNA of a living cell. They did this by using CRISPR to insert specific DNA sequences that encode binary data into bacterial cells. Using this, they managed to encode a 12-byte text message which said, hello world, inside E. coli cells. One genetic disease that CRISPR is being used to cure is sickle cell disease. What is sickle cell disease? Sickle cell disease is a group of hereditary health conditions which causes issues in the red blood cells. An example of one of these conditions is sickle cell anemia, which is the most well-known and the most serious type of sickle cell disease. The main problem caused by sickle cell diseases is the structural defect which causes people with the disease to produce red blood cells with an abnormal shape, which do not live as long as healthy, ordinary red blood cells, and can lead to blockages in the blood vessels that can be fatal. This disease, though unusual, affects the large sum of 100 million people worldwide. So, what are the symptoms of sickle cell disease? There are three primary symptoms of sickle cell disease, painful episodes, anemia, and infections. Painful episodes occur when blood vessels in the body become blocked, causing pain which can last up to a week. This normally happens in parts such as the legs and the arms or the spine, but can also happen in even more body parts. The frequency of these episodes can be once every few weeks, but can also be less than once a year. Anemia is something most sickle cell disease patients have, where the concentration of hemoglobin is extremely low, which results in fatigue. Infections occur much more frequently in those inflicted by sickle cell disease, especially in younger people. And though most infections can be mild, it can increase the chances of people contracting serious diseases, such as meningitis, which can lead to death. There is also an abundance of other possible symptoms, such as delayed puberty, joint pain, strokes, and eyesight problems, to name a few. Causes of sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is hereditary, and therefore it's caused by a person inheriting a sickle cell gene copy from both their parents. This is only the case if both the parents are carriers of the sickle cell gene, or one or both have sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is the part of a mutation of a gene known as HBB, which contains the code for cells to create parts of the hemoglobin red blood cells. This mutation means one of the many amino acids is altered, which changes the hemoglobin's properties, distorting its fibers, which causes the fragile and anomalous shape of sickle cell. The Punnett diagram below shows the chances of a child receiving sickle cell disease from a parent when they are both characters is 25%, which is the most common way sickle cell disease is inherited. According to the data in the UK, Sickle cell disease is common in people with African and Caribbean ethnicity, since the gene mutation that causes sickle cell disease became common in Africa and the Indian subcontinent. CRISPR as a cure for sickle cell disease. CRISPR could be the cure that could put an end to sickle cell disease, and is currently being tested at the Institute Imagine in France to see if it can cure the disease. The scientists are using stem cells taken from the patient's body to treat using CRISPR so that it would be genetically altered to switch on a gene that causes the cell to produce healthy red blood cells with fetal hemoglobin, as seen in the diagram below. The research for this treatment is still in the animal trial stage, and there are still some obstacles to overcome. For example, to put the genetically altered stem cells back into the bone marrow, surgery with high risk and long post-surgery stays, make it not completely ready yet. Also, another issue is that there could be an immune response causing the cells of the body to be attacked. But this risk has been minimized by the fact that they could just use the patient's own stem cells, which would not be recognized as foreign objects. As scientists across the world 
research CRISPRs use as a cure for sickle cell disease. There is no guarantee it will work, but CRISPR is the biggest leap scientists have had in genetic engineering and could cure many genetic diseases, as well as sickle cell disease in the future. Now it's time for a debate. As gene editing is advancing, many questions arise over this controversial topic. A question we are going to debate on is whether it is ethical to use embryos in experiments for gene editing. I would say it depends on the situation. For example, as we touched upon earlier in the presentation, sickle cell diseases can be fatal. With those suffering from this disease also having a shorter life expectancy, people with sickle cell diseases face many challenges, including severe pain episodes, strokes, and organ damage. Therefore, especially if the disease is fatal, I believe that it would be okay to use embryos for gene therapy. The complications of sickle cell diseases are so bad that I think that it would be more ethical to relieve those suffering with sickle cell diseases using gene therapy once fully developed, even if it comes at the cost of using embryos. Now, what do you think about that? Well, Rohan, you made some very good points there, but we need to remember that the main disadvantage with embryonic stem cells is that they are acquired in such a way that causes human embryos to become destroyed in the process. This makes their research unpopular with those that believe that human life begins at conception and that this life is being destroyed. Many would also argue that scientists are playing the role of God here, which is quite controversial and can therefore lead to an ethical dilemma. I agree with your points, Aaron, but as you did state yourself, you should also consider that this all depends on the view of the moral status of an embryo. Some people think embryos are equivalent to all human life, as they will develop into a fetus and finally into a newborn child. However, others view embryos as just a clump of cells, which is also my view. Therefore, depending on the eye of the beholder, the use of embryos wouldn't be a problem at all. Since I believe in the latter, as long as the embryos are being used in a way to push scientific research forward, I'm completely fine with the use of embryos. Well, Rohan, that's all well and good, but we must ask ourselves, do we really know everything about embryonic stem cells? At the end of the day, we don't have a complete understanding of them because these cells do have the potential to divide uncontrollably. And there is the potential that tumours and growths made of unwanted tissues could form. In fact, in his study, Dr. David A. Prentice said, experiments at treating Parkinson's disease in animals gave a slight benefit, but also killed 20% of the animals with brain tumours caused by the embryonic stem cells. 20% is a very serious statistic, and we could, at the end of the day, improve our knowledge and get a better understanding. But until then, there is this risk, and we must ask ourselves, do we really want to go through it? Now, we would like all of you to share your opinions on this question down below. After hearing of this brilliant scientific innovation, creativity more than knowledge. We were inspired and hope that you are too. So we leave you with this quote from Albert Einstein in the hopes that you too will try and create change in this world. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Thank you for listening. Also, make sure to like, comment and subscribe as we will be bringing out more episodes in the future. Thank you.